not show me my way, but show me the way. And there's a freedom in that. We know that, that God has plans for us. It is something that's completely different. You see, vanity is craziness. And when it says vanity of vanity, so the word that's described in there, the Greek word for vanity, havel, means at once vapor and empty. It is an empty cloud of vapor. And yet that's what we spend most of our time chasing after, right? Am I the only one here that does that? Oh, good. I only said, was that how many times, Richard? First time. I used it good, didn't I? The vanity is nothing. The stuff that we fight for, that we, we fret about, is not worth it. William Brown in the Interpretation Series uh, uh, is a book of uh, studies that, for our pastors. And in Ecclesiastes, he, he gives us this vision uh, to what happens when we listen to God versus not listening to God. And he uses two different uh, biblical passages to show this. First of all, he talks about what it looks like with God in Psalm 19. 19. In the heavens he set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from its wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. A day with the Lord is like what this psalm talks about. It's, a, it's this journey towards joy and, and running towards it with, with open arms, and what a beautiful day it is. And then we go back to Ecclesiastes, and we hear what it's like when we just live in vain, and this is what it says in uh, chapter 1, verse 5, the sun rises and the sun goes down and hurries to a place where it rises. The word hurries actually means pants. In other words, we start our day and we race through it. And at the end of the day, all we have is the end of the day. Yet with God, it is a journey of joy. It's understanding that God's got our back, that we have a way to move forward, that he has a plan, and it is a fulfilled plan. Not what we think we need, but the best things for us. That's where God wants us to be. So, so why do we put God first? I'm gonna get, if you're a Methodist and you've heard us talk about uh, the Wesleyan quadrilateral, how many people know what that is? Like two or three? Good. Good. You'll know the answers to the next several questions. Why well, put God first? The very first one is real easy. Scripture is prim primary and also pretty to the point in this case. The first of the Ten Commandments says in Exodus 20 verse 3, You shall have no other gods before me. Why well, put God first? Scripture says so. That's a pretty good reason, don't you think? So the very first thing we want to do is understand that God intended it to be this way. Secondly, we have to understand what it's like when God is put first. Do you remember what it was like when you let God step into a situation, whether it was tumultuous or joyous, but you let God step into it? In Philippians 4, this is what it sounds like when you let God have the day, not yourselves. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And, and it goes on to say, let your gentleness be known to everyone. Do not worry about anything. That's what happens when God is with us. And finally, in verse 7, it tells us when we do this, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Our own experience reminds us of God's grace. And it's a reason that we should put God first. My father died in 1992, and while he was in the hospital dying, it was a horrible time. But God stepped into that place. God was very present in the hospital room where he was, in the waiting room where I spent many, many hours and had people there praying with me and people all over the world praying with me and I knew God was there. And, and so when I look back on that experience, I remember that I had God there. And even when I go through something today, I have to remember that when God is there, it's going to be okay. When God is there, it's going to be okay. That's the experience we should have. But the problem is we're human. We forget that, don't we? We start to think of the world and let the world get involved bigger. And we start to worry and, and put the priority in the wrong place. What's going to happen to me? 
But when we have faith and let God step in, it makes a difference. Number two is experience. Number three, tradition. Hebrews 12 says, Then, therefore, since we are so, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we have, should put God first because we've seen other people do that for us. Whether it be people in Scripture. I feel like I'm spinning all over. Sorry. I'm, t I'm excited about this. Whether it be in Scripture, you listen to Paul or read the letters or, or any part of our Scripture, you read the, uh, the, the tradition of our faith and understand, but also the people that God has blessed us with in our lives. There are many people in this congregation that have, have died and left us. But their traditions that they taught us in their lives will never die. For me, Alice Wiles will always be that person. For, uh, she, in poor health and everything else, woke up in the morning like the sun under the canopy and she entered every day in joy. Whether she was hooked to a breathing machine, whether she was on her last breath, God was with her. And she knew God was right there first. And that's what was important. Am I ever going to forget that? Never. And so the tradition of others along the way, you know who they are. You know the people that look at you and you look back at them and you think, that must be God in those eyes I see there. Those people tell us, put God first. Not as a requirement, but as a blessing. And finally, in the quadrilateral, we talked about scripture, experience, tradition. What's the last one? Reason. This is a really good one. Romans 4.13 says, For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. When we believe... God is with us and, and is working with us. Reason. It makes sense to put God first, right? Yeah. I mean, we know that in our heads. The problem is this other stuff that gets into our heads and starts causing us other thoughts and telling us, wait, this may not really be real. That's an absence of faith. But when we have faith, it's not what we do. It's not all the running around we do. It's believing that God is there for us and guiding us. It makes a difference. And that's just pure reason. And God gave us a brain to do that. Why? So we'd make smart decisions. What do we do? Make dumb decisions. Put God first. That's the priority. That's what we're called to. That's who we should be. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world and forfeit their life, Mark 8.36 says. What good is all this worrying and running doing us? It's not working, is it? No. Our scripture passage today came from Matthew 6, 19 and 20, but right past that is what happens when we put our treasures in the right place. When we put those things that are most important and nothing that is most important. This is what it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body or what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? God loves you. And it is good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's where we're supposed to be. And God loves you like no other. He prioritized you and me. Put us as number one. At the cost of his own son, he sent him to die for us. Because God said we were worth it. And he prioritized us. And Jesus Christ came, and on his long list of things he could have done, his to-do was you and me. 
we are the priority of Jesus Christ and continue to be that even this day through the power of the Holy Spirit he came to let us know we were number one and all we need to do is believe and follow what a gift that is On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus gathered together the disciples. And the disciples were the catalyst of our faith that moved on because they got it finally and moved. But, but he came to make sure they knew that he had sacrificed for them. And so at the table, he gathered the elements of bread and wine. And he, he pulled together the disciples and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You count so much that I'm about to be broken on a cross. After the supper was over, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to the disciples and, and said, this is the blood of the new covenant. Poured out for you, priority, and for many. It, this is what God gave to us for the forgiveness of sins. You, brothers and sisters, are God's priority. And the only priority we should ever have in our lives is Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.